Thank you, Juliana. Up next, we have Daniel. Daniel, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself for Juliana Hever, please. Hi, Juliana, can you hear me? Hi. Hi, thanks very much. Uh, can you answer the question? What's your thought on alcohol on a plant-based diet? Is there a safe limit? Alcohol on a plant-based diet what? Is there any safe limit for alcohol on a plant-based diet? Um, well, alcohol, I don't, specifically on a plant-based diet or any diet, I use the same recommendations as the who is it? I guess it's the US health. I don't remember actually who actually, it's like a kind of an internationally understood rule, not rule, but goal is to get to that women should have less than one serving a day and men should have less than two servings a day um, because it promotes different cancers and for different reasons. So one serving is one ounce of hard alcohol, four ounces of wine or a 12 ounce beer. So you wanna keep it to no more than one for women and no more than two for men per day as a maximum upper limit for alcohol consumption, no matter your diet. Those are just the guidelines, the general guidelines. Great, thank you. Up next we have Carol. Carol, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Hi, Carol. Carol, we see you unmuted, but we're not hearing you. Are you there? Hmm, something seems to be awry, Carol. Forgive us. We're going to uh, move forward and move on to Ursula now. Ursula, if you can go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Hi there. Hi, Juliana. Hello from Germany. You look amazing. Um, I just joined a little bit later, so I'm sorry if I missed anything. Do you have some advice for me? I'm really desperate because I have IBS and I have so many food intolerances and going vegan has really brought me to my limits. Like I ended up at the gastroenterologist a couple of times because it just gives me so much bloating. And the problem is I can't go fully plant-based even though I want to because it just doesn't feel good for my gut, you know? And I've been eating healthy for a long time. You know, it's not like I've been eating junk before. And I've read all the books on the microbiome and I've tried sprouting for days and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Or what are, the best, what are the best of the animal products I could incorporate if I have to? Ah, I don't think that's, that's where you have to go. I, first of all, I'm so sorry. I suffered with that for 30 years. So I could empathize with you. And I would say... One thing that really helped me and helps a lot of my clients is, have you tried time-restricted feeding? Limiting your fed window to a shorter period of time during the day, like eating one or two meals a day within like a four to six hour window. That helped me so much. I can't even begin to tell you. It just giving your bowels rest and time off from digestion and absorption is so helpful. The other thing I would tell you um, is, you can, can, you want to continue eating a healthy, I would love to, well, God, I would love to help you like specifically work on details, but um, I'm trying to be as helpful as I can in this short period of time. Keep going, stick to the same, like same amount of fiber, slowly, slowly, slowly. I don't know if you've already just, if you just dove into the plant-based diet or if you're, if you're, if you've gone into it stepwise, if you've been doing it consistently, how long have you been doing it? It gets better. Give yourself time off of bowel, like of um, digestion absorption. So I would recommend a four to six hour window. If you haven't tried it, it was a life changer for me. Plant-based diet actually helped me a lot. I would remove all of the processed foods right now and all, and then here's the part that you're not going to like, but it's the most important part of all you're going to have to. And this is what I would do. If you were my client, this is what I would make you do. And it's tedious, but it's the only way because everyone's a little bit different and you're going to have these insensitive sensitivities and intolerances that only you are going to be able to identify. So I don't know if you've done this, um, but if you haven't, or if you have, here's what I would say. Keep a very, very detailed food and symptom journal. Write down everything you eat, the time you ate, about what you ate. Like I use a fist as a cup just to guesstimate how much. And then anytime you have symptoms. Now you may need to get to as simple a diet as possible. Like just eat, you know, baked potatoes, sweet potatoes, like the very benign foods, the very gentle foods. Um, and then, so the, cause the fewer food components in that meal, you'll know, you'll be able to identify. Cause if you've got this vast, crazy, not crazy, but like, you know, a, a recipe that's got like a lot of different ingredients. How do you know what it is that's causing the problem? 
So try to give yourself some time here where you're going to just like focus on just like minimizing the amount of foods you're consuming, document the heck out of it. Like know every single thing you're eating and what you respond to and what's going on with your GI system and then make adjustments accordingly. The other thing I want to say is things that people tend to be the most sensitive to are um, legumes. Um, so then you want to go very slowly with the legumes. So maybe you start with, maybe you're better with lentils than beans. Some people are one or the other, but just do like, like those are the, that, and then also cruciferous vegetables seem to be hard on a lot of people. And then the allium family, onions, garlic, and these are really, really important food groups, but you may just need to eliminate them temporarily. The other thing I would suggest is to try to do a lot of cooked foods for now. Um, because sometimes that's gentler too, like cooked vegetables are just gentler and easier to absorb. But again, this is so many things I'm throwing out there at you. I would love for you to just document the heck, like document, document the time, what you ate and the symptom, and then start to look for trends. I would love to help you if I could help you. Um, but that's what you, it's a self-study. I mean, you, that's why I just help people look for trends, but that's, that's all you can do. And you can go to the most extreme version of this and it's miserable, but it's very effective. It's the most effective thing to do is to go to the most simple diet, like an elimination diet. So just, you know, just eating I don't, sweet potatoes or butternut squash, something very benign and gentle and just eating that for a few days and then adding one food in at a time. Horrible, draconian, but it's the most accurate way to exactly figure out what's bothering you. And then you'll know how to move forward. So I, I'm sending you all my hopes. I know you can do this with plant-based. You don't need to eat animal products for this. And by any means, you just need to adjust. And your microbiome needs to adjust too. So I would love to know more details because it's really hard for me to do this just like in this kind of um, setting. But I hope some of that will help you. And I wish you the very best because I know how miserable it can be. Mm -hmm.